Hello, welcome to Pan's Kitchen. Today we're making gochujang jjigae. Sticking with this chill format this week as it's been a very tough week for us. Really appreciate all the support last week. Gochujang jjigae literally translates to gochujang stew. If you like gochujang, this one is perfect for you. This one is less common, at least from what I've experienced. I don't think I ever had it until I made it today. And let me tell you, it might be up there as one of my favorites now. We'll start off by making our rice. Rinse the rice and discard the water from from the first rinse, but save the subsequent rinses until you get about two and a half cups of rice water. The rice water gives a very subtle smoothness and acts as a light thickening agent to the stew. You don't need this, but I do think it adds a lot of positives to this dish. Once the water from the rice runs clear, add the amount of water to the line of the amount of rice you're cooking. Put that in the cooker and let's start cooking. One of the unique things about this stew is the potato. You just need one peeled potato. I'm using a red one we got from Susie, but feel free to use a golden one as well. Make sure to cut any gnarly parts away. And then cut into small bite-sized chunks. The cooking time of this dish is when the potatoes are done cooking, so the smaller the tater, the faster this cooks. Next, cut up three mushrooms into slightly larger chunks and set those off to the side. I'm using baby bella mushrooms, but if you can get your hands on oyster or shiitake mushrooms, that will probably work better. Then cut up two stalks of green onion into about half inch chunks. I have this nifty little green onion planter my mom got me, so I'm going to save the root to grow some more later. Next we'll thinly slice half an onion. I'll save the other half later in this handy beeswax wrap. So all the prep is done so let's get ready to cook. In a pot add one tablespoon each of sesame oil and avocado oil on medium heat. Then add six ounces of impossible meat and stir fry for a minute. Add one tablespoon of oyster sauce and cook through. Drop the heat to medium low, push the meat off to the side and add the gochujang to the oil and stir constantly for two minutes. I'm using two tablespoons spoons here. We are stir frying the gochujang to develop flavor. This is a very important step and make sure to use medium low heat so you don't burn it. Many recipes call for four tablespoons of gochujang but I'm keeping it to two as I don't want this to be overly spicy. Adjust the amount of gochujang to your taste. Just make sure you increase the oil if you decide to do this. Mix the gochujang into the meat and then add one tablespoon of gochugaru. Mix everything to combine and immediately add the water to prevent the gochujang from burning. Then increase the heat to high and drop the potatoes in. Then two tablespoons of minced garlic. Add in three tablespoons of soup soy sauce and you can definitely use normal soy sauce if you don't have soup soy sauce. Let this come up to a boil and add in the rest of the vegetables. Let boil away for three minutes. If you have a dukbegi, which is a Korean stone pot, start heating that over medium high heat on another burner. I decided tofu would be a good idea so I quickly diced up a half block of tofu into bite sized cubes and put that in into the soup after the three minutes was up. Also, if you want just a touch more um, add in a sprinkle of MSG. Stir well to combine and you're all set. Taste for seasoning and add more salt if necessary. Mine was perfect, so I scooped it up into the duke baggie and topped with a bit of fresh cracked black pepper. Serve with a fresh bowl of rice and you have an amazing, comforting meal that is sure to warm you up on a cold winter day. And this was absolutely amazing. The stir fry gochujang introduced a spicy yet savory flavor that straight up felt like I was being given a hug. And as I said before, this week has been incredibly tough, so food like this is perfect for making those days feel better. The potatoes soak up the delicious broth and the impossible meat just goes perfectly with the rice. This is definitely going to go in my normal rotation and it's not too spicy. So give this a shot and let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see next and I'll see you next time.